the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus prayed for his disciples, saying, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, thee Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Got it. Good morning. Good morning. What a beautiful day in the neighborhood. The theme for the homily today could be what does it mean to be in the world, but not part of the world? When you hear, hear that word world, what comes to mind? When I hear that world, word, world, three songs immediately come to mind. The first that we just sang, the gradual, this is my father's world. The second, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. You know, there is so much stuff happening in our world today. Sometimes we can get caught up in the minutia of the world. And that's not what God wants us to do. God wants us to enjoy, to be grateful with what we have, and to look forward to the blessings to come. This is the Sunday after the Feast of the Ascension this past week, and it seems to be an excellent time to me to take stock of our blessings. You know, the third song that comes to mind is I think one of my favorite songs was long, long ago by Louis Armstrong. It's a wonderful world. The words, I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white. The bright blessed day, the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. You know, if we 
can just focus on what a wonderful world instead of all of the gross and awful things happening around us. How would that world be? Would, how would, what would it look like? What would it feel like? There's so much corruption in the world. There's so much worry about disease. There's hatred, there's wars, killings, murders. And this world is, at times, a sick place. And in John 3.16, is quite possibly the most well-known verse from the Bible. And we hear, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will never perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, that the world might be saved through him. You know, I've thought about today's readings and the gospel especially, and I remember the seminarian's response when I reflected on the ascension with this person, and he said, you know, I asked him how I felt, how do you feel about leaving seminary? And he said, I'm really ready. The reason I came to seminary was in order to prepare to leave. Well, I guess that makes sense. And my little creative right brain clicked in. And I took that a little bit further, thinking about Jesus coming among us in order to leave. And the idea moved on to the next stage. As I thought about us humans, we are born fully to live our lives in the fullness and most blessedness of God in hopes of leading to our eternal home. Maybe those thoughts are oversimplifications, but maybe they aren't. In the New Testament, we often think of Jesus in prayer, and we recall Jesus teaching his disciples that the Lord's Prayer. That's a wonderful prayer. It's a great prayer to use as a breath prayer, to breathe in and to say one sentence, to breathe out the next sentence. It can be very calming, very reassuring. And so I encourage you to do that with that Lord's Prayer next time you say it. Just be very quiet, quiet your mind, quiet your body. And so today, Today, we focus on the world and the blessings of the world, that God loved us so much that he sent God's only son to be with us forever and ever. You know, we think of Jesus' high priestly prayer sometimes in this gospel lesson from John 17, where Jesus intercedes for us in prayer for us, for our past, for our present, and for our future. This prayer is from Jesus, personally for each one of us. And Jesus prays to our Heavenly Father for our safety in that prayer as well. For what purpose? So that we can be one as Jesus is one with us. What did Jesus know about factions and divisions that would evolve around religion and Christianity? That word protection or shield is used three times in this gospel. And we can think of numerous images of helmets that are for our defense used while engaging in physically dangerous sports. It would be foolish foolish to engage in these sports without the proper protection for one's head. It would also be foolish to live in this world of ours without need for protection for our hearts, our minds, our bodies. We Christians are to love the world as God loves the world. Jesus did not condemn the world around him. 
He blessed it with unconditional love. Blessing is a good thing, right? To bless something means to set it apart for special use as a special part of God's creation. And as Episcopalians, we bless just about anything that doesn't run away from us. I bless boats, airplanes, animals, houses, you name it. And it's a wonderful thing because we're claiming that as part of God's creation. And speaking of blessings, to bless something, we set it apart. What if each day? No matter what, we focus on one blessing, no matter how tiny, and share it with one other person. I know that might sound scary to those of us that are introverts, but I wonder what would happen if we were each committed to talking to one other person about our blessings each day. I wonder what would happen. Amen.